Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Praetorian and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. So we're going to be starting our new series with the Fear Right mod, Legacy of the Great War. Now before we get started, I would like to explain why we are playing with this mod, uh, because we had a patron vote and this was not the winner. The original winner was the uh, Cold War mod, uh, and uh, that was actually tied for first place, but then when you removed uh, one of the patron votes who's no longer a patron, uh, it was in first place. And uh, I ended up doing a series of that. I recorded it last weekend. I recorded a uh, one hour video, part one, for it, and I ended up not liking the mod, guys. It wasn't anything wrong with the mod. I think they did a fantastic job on it. You can tell that there was a lot of work put into it. Uh, it seems like something maybe I could get into it another time, perhaps. I don't know. I don't want to go into why I didn't like it. Uh, I feel like it needs like an, uh, a longer explanation than I can, can give here. I'm actually considering doing a little 15, maybe 20 minute video explaining why I didn't like the mod, why I didn't want to play it. Because I feel like I owe the patrons uh, explanation since that's technically what won. And then I know there's a lot of people have been, who have been asking me uh, over the last year or so, really, to play that mod. Uh, so I, I wanted to uh, explain why I didn't like it in a little bit more, a little bit more detail. Uh, but basically, it's it's a personal preference thing when it comes to the gameplay, guys. It has nothing to do with the mod not being good. It's just a personal preference. So with me deciding not to do that series and not to put that video out, uh, I went to the second place, which was a tie between this mod and the uh, Red World mod. And I was thinking the Red World, World mod might might i didn't really look at it but it might have the same issues that i had with the cold war one uh so i decided to go with this one i kind of uh took a look at the national focuses looked at all the countries and yeah i don't really know much about the mod but it looks interesting that i would like to try it out so we are going into this in a kind of a blind playthrough guys i, I really don't know a whole lot about the mod uh with the exception of that it's supposed to be inspired by the kaiserreich lore uh, essentially there's an event in Kaiserreich uh, where there's like a book, an uh, alternate history book, where it's alternate history for Kaiserreich, uh, where the book uh, imagines a world where the uh, central powers lost the, the First World War, uh, you know, as they did historically. Uh, except for, so that's what this is. This is a reimagining of that, as if the central powers had lost, but it's in the Kaiserreich world. So I don't know uh, what resulted or how it resulted in this world being so different from uh i'm just gonna select us for right now we're gonna play as us uh, but how this world resulted in being so different uh from our world because uh, as you see it is noticeably different um you'd have to really go into the lore something i didn't have time to do uh, but it looks interesting i'm really looking forward to hopping in this just playing something different uh you know a different setup uh, from Kaiserreich will be nice. Uh, it doesn't seem to have as many mechanics and stuff as Kaiserreich does, though. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna explore this. And the country we're gonna be playing is the Kingdom of Italy. Uh, so I I was kind of I really wanted to play as the UK because they seem to have a really nice setup that's kind of different. Uh, you know, they start out with a revolt uh, in India, and then I think they I think they have revolts across all of their colonies. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but it really does seem like the mod's kind of designed around you playing the United Kingdom. Uh, but I decided not to play them because, well, we just did a UK playthrough. Uh, we also just did a Soviet Union one. Uh, and then we also did a Germany one, which Germany seems to be another good country to start at. So I didn't want to do any of those three countries. Uh, and so it was really kind of a toss-up for me between France or Italy. But we also just did a, a France one in another mod, so in, in uh, Kaiserreich. So, um, yeah, for me, I thought Kingdom of Italy would be... The best one to play as. They're a little bit different. As you see, Umberto II is the monarch here. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a different setup. And we're going to go ahead and hop into this. Uh, we are going to go ahead and strengthen. We're just going to strengthen everybody, guys, because, frankly, except for ourselves, obviously, because I don't know who we're going to be fighting, because I really don't know how the setup is in this. So let's just strengthen everybody by two point. Well, not the, not the Americans. <laughs> They're already strong enough as it is. Uh, so let's just do everybody else, though. And the Ottomans. Uh, the Ottomans were also kind of a toss-up for me. I thought they would have been kind of fun. Uh, the, the reason why I didn't pick any minor countries is because most of the minor countries don't seem to have... Uh, they don't seem to have their own national focus trees, which is kind of a deal-breaker for me. Uh, so the Ottomans do have it, though. And I really considered playing as them, but we've kind of done a lot of Ottoman and Turkish playthroughs already. So let's do Italy. We haven't played Italy since... 
Hearts of Iron first came out, and this was the first country I played as uh, for a Let's Play. Uh, so yeah, we haven't we haven't played as Italy in a long time. So let's give them a shot. Uh, I believe this is good. Yeah, this looks nice. Uh, we're gonna be playing on regular difficulty, uh, and I'll explain why here in a minute. Because uh, I feel like I have to explain why. Because anytime I don't, then people will come into the comments and say, "Oh, you don't want a difficult experience. You'd play on elite." We've done elite playthroughs, guys. Um, or we did the Soviet Union one was an elite playthrough, and I think in that one, I think I proved why elite is not is not uh, more difficult. It's it's not more difficult. It's just less fun, in my opinion. And I have to explain this because otherwise I will get a bunch of comments asking about it. Uh, so I'll, I'll be brief here, but essentially it just makes everything take longer, and I don't like that. That's not more difficult. That's just boring. Uh, it takes you know longer to pick texts, longer to get political power so that you can get advisors, longer production uh, so you can get more units. So essentially you're just waiting uh, longer for everything, which doesn't make a lot of sense how that would be uh, more funner. So uh, we're, we're going to be playing with the AI difficulties up. That's the way I prefer doing it. So uh, just looking at our, our guys here, I'm trying to see who needs to be trained. It looks like we do have several units to be trained. So let's go ahead and get everybody training up that needs to be. And I think we'll just... Cr oh, damn it. Shit, I'm fucking this up. Okay, this is the way we'll do it. So that when I fuck it up and... Pull a unit out, doesn't need to be pulled out. It won't be an issue. All right, so let's go ahead and change them to green. This will be our training army. Uh, we're gonna give them that classical uh, peasant <laughs> icon there. And then let's go ahead and get them training. Uh, they're gonna exercise them. We're not gonna give them a garrison area uh, because we're gonna just leave them in their current spots oh, right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get all the units that need to train placed in there. Pronto, this is the figure. first thing we'll do. Uh, and it seems that several of our units are pretty well uh, built up already, experience-wise. Uh, so we don't have to train everybody. Which is nice. Uh, these guys will have to train, though. Did I create two armies? I did. All right, let's go ahead and fix that. And these guys in Sicily need to train up. What about this guy here? He does as well. Uh, and we have more units over here, and only one of them needs to train. And what about over here in Libya? Yeah, but you're going to notice a very different setup, guys. Uh, it's quite a bit different. You notice we're also not at war with Ethiopia. And as of right now, I cannot declare war in Ethiopia. Um, if we look at them, uh, justify war goal, we need 75% roll tension before we're going to be able to justify our war goal there. And uh, we're obviously nowhere close to that. But you know what? We might get an event or a uh, national focus that might give us some claims. So that we can declare war on Ethiopia or somebody else. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's go in and hop into the national focus tree now. Uh, I don't think... I was looking at this before, and I don't think we can go for anything. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can go for any national focuses right now. Uh, and I don't know if because we're waiting for an event to fire, which might be the case, uh, or if it's because of the fact that we don't have any political power. Uh, our political power is garbage right now because of a communist threat. We're losing one daily political power because of a communist threat here. Unrest in the Italian Republic has left the country vulnerable to a communist uprising. If this threat is ignored, we may see large-scale communist revolts or even a coup in our glorious kingdom. Uh, we also uh, have colonial administration here, which means we can recruit less, and we need more consumer goods. So overall, Italy's in kind of a weak position, from what I noticed, uh, much weaker than they are in vanilla, and that's why I chose them. I think it could be a fun playthrough, especially if we end up having some communist civil war or something like that, that could be enjoyable. Uh, let's go and get all our stuff done so we can get the, the ticker going, uh, time going, and my stomach is growling, man. I'm starving. I haven't really eaten much today. Uh, we're gonna get basic machine tools. We're gonna get electronic electrical mechanical engineering and pretty much all the basic stuff here guys um yeah but this we don't have like any of the starting text at all uh we're gonna get construction one and let me see what else we want to get uh we still need planes uh, but i think we're gonna wait see if we can't get uh i wonder if it's like kaiser reich where the uh the companies aren't actually needed before you... Ah, maybe not. It might be required. It's hard to tell. I want to say it is going to require us to have these uh, before we research the equipment. 
I don't know. We'll guess we'll see. I like how Kaiser Reich does it, though, where you don't actually need it uh, beforehand. Uh, let's see what else we could get instead of that. I guess we can go for some support companies. Yeah, we're going to go for support companies. Although, I am almost wanting to go support weapons because I don't know if we're going to find ourselves in an early war here or even an early civil war. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, so, looking at our factories, we have... See, 19, we had 33 civilian factories, 19 available to us, 14 military factories. All right, let's go and do civilian for right now. Uh, we will do them, oh, I think France is an ally right now. Let's go and build in some of these quicker locations. Don't have a lot of infrastructure, apparently. Oh, here, Tuscany, I'm like blind. I didn't even see that. I think that'll be a good start. That'll take us a little while to get that built. Let's go and get our military factories uh, going as well. We're gonna do, you know, Pretty much of the basics. Not much is, is different in this mod, uh, equipment-wise and, and all that good stuff compared to vanilla. Uh, light tanks, yeah, we're gonna go for some light tanks. And we're not gonna build any anti-war fighters. We'll just wait till we get better fighters. We'll get the close air support going and naval bombers. And that's probably gonna be it. Uh, we'll do dockyards here in a minute. Let's go and get the factories assigned first. Uh, how many do we have left? We have seven available. Let's go and do some more infantry equipment. It looks like we don't have anything stockpiled. Uh, so we'll start stockpiling those now. And let's go and get some going towards light tanks, close air support. And if we get a new one, it'll go towards the naval bombers. All right, let's go and assign convoys. And how are we doing on our, our ships? We actually have level two battleships now. So let's go ahead and start building those. And I'm going to ignore submarines in this playthrough, as I did in the last one. Until we get the new update, I don't see submarines being useful anymore, guys. Uh, I don't know if the mod does any changes to make submarines better, uh, but they are garbage in vanilla now. Uh, I, I don't like them anymore. Right, we're going to go do light cruisers. Uh, I don't... I don't think we're going to do destroyers, guys. I think I'm also going to... Uh, I, I found that... You don't really need to do destroyers and light cruisers uh, in vanilla now. And I think that this game has the same setup as vanilla. You don't really need to do the destroyers anymore. Uh, the, the light cruisers do fine against... The submarines are so ridiculously underpowered that you just don't need the destroyers. Uh, so I know that you can build a lot more destroyers, of course, uh, than you can uh, the light cruisers. Uh, where are we going to... We're going to place our fleet. Uh, we'll probably place them up here. Yeah, we'll do right here in Duskney. All right, so we're going to get all of our uh, ships going into there. And we're just going to devote majority of these towards the battleship. Uh, we need to get carriers. I am going to probably do a early carrier uh, tech grab. Uh, and that looks good. And I like the way this looks. Let's go ahead and do some trading, guys, because we are short of oil and rubber. Uh, we will trade with... Uh, let's just trade with the Americans. They have the most available. Uh, I don't know who's going to be friendly to us, who's going to be enemy, because uh, I'm really going into uncharted territory here. Uh, I guess we'll do... I'd like to help France out since they're our ally, but yeah, they don't have any rubber. I'm surprised by that. You'd think their lands in uh, Asia would be getting them a little bit of rubber for trade, uh, but six is not much. we will just go and trade with the United Kingdom. And there we go. I think we're done. We're going to train anybody up. We don't really have any manpower right now, guys. Uh, so, yeah. I think we are ready to start. Oh, we got our event here. I probably should have waited till the events fired before I started going, trying to fly forward. So this is Fear Reich Alpha Build 0.1.3. After months of blood, toil, tears, and sweat, the Fear Reich team finally has released. Uh, okay, da, da, I got this. I thought this might be some lore stuff, uh, but essentially it's just telling us that it's uh, it's an alpha. So there's going to be bugs. Uh, so see if uh, what's up with party popularity. Yeah, I guess we'll take a look at what this is. Obviously borrows from, okay, so it's all Kaiser Reich's system, which is right here. Uh, that's another uh, some reason why we're gaining so little political power. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. And I lost political power from, from that event? Is that, is that what I'm gathering? Oh, we don't have any political power, so I guess it's relevant. I don't know why it said negative five. Uh, so, news events. Uh, let's see, let's see all the news events. Uh, I'm wondering how much different the mod is. Uh, compared to Kaiser Reich, Indian Rebellion of 1935. Uh, we already knew about this. You guys are gonna read that, but yeah, that starts. The game starts out with that. And what does that see? Who wins? Uh, I would assume it was. It would be set up so that 
you know, the 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 revolt would be successful, and you'd have to have like a uh, Jesus Christ, this is <laughs> quite a bit of reading here. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to have like the player here to kind of help out for them to to win. I don't really know if it's it's balanced though, so perhaps uh, the British Raj will actually succeed there. We'll have to see. Uh, so this is this event is well, it's extremely long, and I think it tells us the current setup of our country right now. Uh, so I guess we should probably read it. Uh, so after winning the Great War, Italy has had regained the long-dreamed uh, terra. Er, I am terrible at pronouncing things, guys. So just get used to it now. Uh, I tend to either butcher it or skip over it so that I don't uh, uh, don't offend anybody with my terrible pronunciation. Uh, but yeah, we 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 dreamed of this and we've achieved it when we got Dalmatia, Trentino, and Istria plus some colonial concessions. Although the war was a diplomatic success, the same thing can't be said about the economic situation. The Italian, the Italian economy wasn't ready for the war and the military industry wasn't developed enough, so during the first year of conflict, thousands of people fought with only feather caps and knives. The government realized the situation was horrible, so a lot of factories were shut down and then transformed into ammo and rifle factories. So when the war was over and the workers returned to the factories, there was no work. People were also promised money for fighting the war, but those were never received by the soldiers. In this climate of anger and delusion, workers decided to take their opportunity and occupy the factories. The Bien Bienio uh, Rosso has started in reaction to this attempted revolution. Squads of Great War veterans and nationalists in general formed up to fight the Red Menace. Workers occupied and held good chunks of land until 1923, when the pro-government and nationalist forces succeeded in taking it. Following the glory, uh, war, I don't know, maybe following the war, uh, war veteran, uh, poet, and writer uh, Di Anzio, who led the squads until the moment, decided it was the moment to overthrow the monarchy. Thousands of legionnaires stormed all the major cities of Italy, falling in some and or failing in some and succeeding in others. While the main group entered Parliament, the action was stopped by the Regio Esercito and De Anzio arranged a flight to Fiume, where he had an established headquarters and tried another time. Uh, but he was instantly chased off by the local police pl platoon. In the following days, all the conspiracy theorists were arrested and an austerity government called. The austerity government, headed by uh, Anvano Bonami, Bonami uh, started a number of reforms, starting with the concession of workers' rights and ending with the reform of the judici judiciary system, and thus the amnesty of all of the legion legionnaires and revolutionaries that fought between 1921 and 1923. Uh, during the Biennium, uh, in 1926, Liberal King uh, Vit Vittorio Emmanuel III deluded at the end of his reign, feeling guilty of the chaotic biennium and scared of a comeback of the communists, abdicated in favor of his son, Umberto II de Savoy. Today, Italy has almost uh, recovered, but major change on a global scale could revive one uh, could revive one decade old memories and anger the far left opposition that has been still strong to this day. Jumping to 1936, liberals, now led by Luigi Anunati, <laughs> I don't have any idea how to pronounce that, still remain the largest party in parliament, but not a majority. Their government is unpopular and unable to get much done. 1936 parliamentary election is looking to is looking to be one of the most defining in Italian history. The liberals are opposed by three other coalitions, the center-left Social Democrats, the Christian uh, Conservatives, and the far-left Communists. While well, it looks like the Social Democrats have the best chance of gaining a majority against the liberals, in a quickly changing world, it could be anyone's race. God damn, that was a, that was, yeah, <laughs> that's quite a bit. But you know what? I'm glad they had this in here. I, I wish uh, Kaiserreich had a bit more of this kind of explaining the current setup of your country uh, and the little recent history it, of it. That'd be nice. All right, so uh, I was expecting there to be an election this year. All right, I am expecting there to be an election uh, because I believe there's a national focus for it. Uh, somewhere over here. A peaceful ending at midnight. Read this in a second. Uh, the 1936 Italian election. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens in that. Uh, peaceful ending at midnight. King George V is dead. Oh no. Alright, the king is dead, guys. Uh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to follow the, the situation here in India. The assassination of the Sultan. Alright. Lots of events popping up here. We won't read all of them. We'll only read... Uh, the really major ones, or the ones concerning our country. Uh, I wanted them to be able to fire those, so those of you who are curious or first time seeing this mod would be able to read them yourselves if you want to. So an invitation to the Paris Colonial Exposition. 
The French have provided us with an invite to the Paris Colonial Exposition. The point of this festival of sorts seems to be a political move to change the face of their colonial empire, and they hope we will also attend for the same purposes. Whilst we could of course attend, it would undoubtedly displease Germany and the Soviets, some nations who were very vocally against the notion of a Paris Colonial Exposition. Okay, well, the French are our allies. That's our current setup right here. If you guys want to see what the factions look like, I guess we're going to take a look real quick. This is the faction setup. Uh, most of this is all Britain's faction, of course, all their uh, colonies, uh, which they still have all of them in their faction. Interesting. I thought some of them were out, but that's not the case. Of course, we have the Third International, uh, which is not called the Combatern. It's called Third International. And then we got the German faction here. Uh, and then we have the Continental Entente, which is France and all of their, uh, all of their uh, colonies. And then, of course, it's us. Uh, we should probably take a look and see how our guys are at training. Let's go and pull out anybody who's done. Uh, we are going to want to change up the arrangement of our troops here soon. I'm, I'm going to guess that there could be conflict against the Ottomans. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Uh, but yeah, we'd probably want some troops there. Uh, could see probably putting more in, in Libya as well. This is probably not going to be enough. Uh, and then looking at Italy's, Italy's fine. Um, there's not really any borders that we need to move troops to. I mean, I guess we can move them over to here. Uh, but right now, our, our current setup is, is fine. Uh, and I don't think we can send volunteers. Let me just take a look if they've changed that at all. Uh, we actually could send volunteers, interestingly enough. Okay, well, we'll probably want to send volunteers then. I didn't even know about that. Uh, so about a good month or so has gone by. When we could have been sending volunteers, I was expecting we wouldn't be able to since you know they changed up the world tension for a lot of stuff. Uh, so who do we want to help? Republican Spain is the social conservatives. Uh, these are the national populist. Uh, and then, okay, I, I guess we would want to help out Republican Spain in this particular case. Uh, is there no monarchist? Oh, there we go. There's a monarchist right there. All right, so they would be the ones we would want to help. Though, technically, we're market liberals. Uh, so maybe it'd be better to help out the Republicans because the Republicans are not, they're social conservatives. Okay, so yeah, they're not uh, not the the, uh, the same setup as uh, the vanilla game. All right, so yeah, we're not actually monarchist in, in the same way that these guys are. Uh, so it would make, because you know we're more, we're more of a democracy, so it would make more sense to send them assistance. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to send how, see how many troops we can send. We can send two divisions, so we're not going to make a big difference. But we're going to get two divisions together to send them. How, are, how do our tank divisions look? I'm guessing they're going to be kind of garbage. Yeah, they're, they're terrible. There's not even any reason to send those there. They are terrible. I'm, a, I'm just going to take a look at all of my division designs, actually, and see which one's the best to send. So infantry is garbage. Mountain slightly better tanks as we've already seen are, are terrible uh and yeah there's there's no reason to send anybody but the uh the alpine divisions uh, plus they'll help in spain because alpine uh so let's grab up two of them uh we have this guy just sitting here we'll, we'll send him and we'll just send one of the ones over here on the french border we don't really even need any troops over here uh, since this is an ally all right so let's go ahead and put these guys into an army we'll give them a general uh, we'd probably just give them our best general. Uh, we could train somebody up instead, but good god, all of our generals are pretty garbage overall. Uh, so, yeah, it makes more sense to just, yeah, they're all terrible. Alright, so yeah, we're just gonna send, uh, Giovanni. Improve his abilities. And we're gonna change up his, his color. We'll make him red, I suppose. Or no, we'll make him blue. And then give him a diamond. And then we're going to send him over there to help out as much as he possibly can. Uh, it looks like they're having some difficulty. I don't know how well this is going to work out, but at least we'll, we'll be able to uh, keep him alive a little bit longer. Uh, I don't know which front we'll put him on. Let's just wait till we get him there, of course. Uh, I, I'm going to guess they're going to accept it. Uh, so an invitation to the Paris Colonial Exposition. Uh, so we need to pick what we're going to do on this one. So I think we're going to participate. I don't know why we win it. I don't really care about pissing Germany and Russia off. We shall participate. This is our ally, and they invited us. It'd be rude to not accept. All right, so of course they're going to accept it. Let's just take a look at when we're going to get our troops there. It's going to be 22nd of February, so that we can make sure that we pause it when that happens. Uh, nation under siege. Okay, is this involving us? Oh, yep, this is our communist problems. A terrorist attack by the Forma, Forma Zazini di Defeso 
proletaria, uh, which is translated to formations for pro proletariat defense. Uh, a newly constituted communist group shocked the entire nation this morning. A previously planted bomb was detonated at uh, hours 1046 on the headquarter of the Liberal Party, killing three and injuring several members of the party. According to witnesses, the bomb was planted yesterday night by a group of four young men. The revendication of the attack, revendication of the attack by the group happened in the early afternoon. Uh, so the police and the Carabinaria, I'm fucking terrible, guys. <laughs> already started the investigation in the parliament. Talks about uh, the parliament talks have already begun about whatever or not increase security in public places. All right, so some of this is my terrible pronunciation, and some of this is uh, uh seems like grammar's a little bit off. I have already begun about whatever or not. Okay, uh, so we basically can increase the security and strengthen the police role, which is going to cost us 50 political power, uh, or we can violence the way try to negotiate talks, uh, which would cost us 100 uh, political power. Well, I, I man, I, I don't want to spend 100 political power. It seems like, you know, let's just, uh, I mean, this one's more expensive, so you'd expect, so you think it's better, right? Violence is the way try to negotiate uh let's let's do that i suppose we're a democracy so let's try it we're gonna be in the negative we're gonna have a little power problems for probably for a, a long time it just sucks we can't do national focus tree that's that's a bummer we can't pick a national focus okay so armed resistance forms oh that's uh, maybe we shouldn't have done that <laughs> maybe i should have been more aggressive tariffs have refused to accept talks to the government and started resistance on the mountains a uh a communicate a communication, maybe a communication saying that the uh, Formazani will never collaborate with the current government reached the parliaments this morning. Statesmen were rather sad, but not surprised. But the most worrying thing is that civils are reporting groups of people carrying red flags and rifles moving to the mountains. If the situation escalates, we may find ourselves in a situation worse than the one that occurred 10, nearly 20 years ago. We need to take actions before they organize. So, we lost stability. That's devastating. And the far right rises up. So after the consolidation of the communist resistance, far-right extremists embraced the arms and decided to fight the Bolshevik threat. The so-called Squadre de Azioni, which is action squads, begun to organize in all the major cities and to raid leftist journals. If we play our cards with wisdom, we can manage to use those extremists against the insurgents, but the more moderate exponents of our government might not be in favor of this. And we can support the militia, we gain uh, stability, but the Valkyrist, which are the faction in Germany, I believe. Yeah, this is the Valkist. Uh, so the Valkist would gain 5%, and National Populist would gain 5%. Or we can't fight extremism with extremism. We must seek moderation. Well, I guess the question is, do we want to go far right, or do we want to be democratic? Uh, for me, I would prefer a democratic able to play through. I mean, far right, you know, it's essentially the vanilla playthrough with us allying with germany yeah that's not that fun man i don't want to do that i'd prefer to play with i'd prefer to stay allied with france so let's let's not do that can't fight extremism with extremism guys all right so let me take a look at how our troops are done uh yeah they're they're, they're finished so let's go and pull all of them out leave the last one here to continue training uh i i think we are going to send some more troops uh to some of these areas yeah let's go ahead and do that i feel like we could have a few more in there it would be useful uh, so let me just see where we have a lot of troops right now uh i think we don't need as many here on the border and of course the situation could change there uh we'll just have to see and uh, we'll go ahead and move one division here and one division here uh, i don't think we'll move the mountain troops i'm tempted to go move mountain troops over there to the ottomans you know what let's move one Move one of these mountain troops over there, and uh, I guess I could have done it this way instead. That would have been smarter. <laughs> Stay there, my friend. All right, so we're gonna move uh, three divisions: uh, one over here to Libya, and one over there to Anatolia. And our two divisions have arrived. Excellent. Uh, so we'll get to do a little bit of playing around with them. Uh, let's just send one of these guys uh, over here. We'll put them into. Uh, we'll put them into Benghazi. And then one mountain troop and one infantry. We're going to be coming on over here because, yeah, it doesn't feel like we have enough divisions here uh, in case the Ottomans decide to pull something. I just don't know. They do have their own national focus tree, so they could they could get frosty with us. So our troops are right here. 
So let's go ahead and help out. Um, we'll just attack these guys here now. Try and get them destroyed. I'm going to just take this down to three. And uh, I almost actually, you know what? Let's send a division over here to kind of stop them from advancing into our territory here. Uh, so one division will help out there, destroying these guys, while the other division tries to push back the uh, phalangist over here. Attack! Oh, that's not going to work. Alright, so let's instead do something different. We'll come up around the side here and attempt to cut them off. I think that'd be the, the smarter way to do this. Uh, and we might actually be able to come over this way as well. Uh, I'll try doing it this way. Uh, we have another division we could destroy, help out. I almost want to help them out. Uh, make sure that it gets done efficiently. In fact, we will go ahead and have this guy do it. Uh, though it looks like he's about to be destroyed, it seems that the Spaniards have the same idea as I do, like cut these troops off and let's get them destroyed. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and grab up these lands here, and then we're going to attack these guys uh, just to lock them down. And Omar Mukhtar captured in October 1911 during the Italo-Turkish War, the Regia Marina, which is our fleet, reached the shores of Libya and then a, ter then a territory subject to Ottoman Turkish control. The government demanded that the Turkish administration and garrison surrender their territory to the Italians or incur the immediate destruction of the city of Tripoli and Benghazi. The Turks and their Libyan allies withdrew to the countryside instead of surrendering, and the Italians bombarded the city for three days, and then proclaimed the Tripoltinians to be committed and strongly bound to Italy. This marked the beginning of a series of battles between the Italian colonial forces and the Libyan armed opposition in east of Libya. From this chaos, a Senesi fighter Omar Mukhtar arose as the leader of the resistance and figurehead of, for all Libyans. Uh, Mukhtar was a skilled tactician and good strategist, but our soldiers finally captured him earlier this morning after raiding his house. Uh, the longtime leader of the Libyan folk is now under our custody. A special trial will be organized in the next few days, but this signs a turning point for the Libyan campaign. All right, excellent. Uh, so this will generate a little bit of political power. Doesn't help us out much, though, because obviously we don't get to keep any of that. I'm going to go ahead and destroy these guys first. I think that would be the best way to do this. Uh, they are now cut off. We, we can't do it ourselves yet. Uh, they haven't been cut off long enough. Uh, but we'll come we'll come help with these guys, I think. Uh, just to make sure they... You know what? They're so cut off. There's no... Let's just get this done. We'll just force them to capitulate. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anybody here to stop us. They're winning now. They now are lacking supplies. Seems we're also getting some help from the, the French. Oh, the French Republic is helping. Awesome. I'm glad that they decided to help uh, the same faction as we did. Uh, so we're going to get all this wrapped up here. Uh, so even though we only have three three little divisions, uh, we are doing a lot to help out. So we'll just kind of eliminate each one of the Spanish factions one by one. Uh, it does seem Madrid is is at risk right now. Uh, we are, in fact, winning this attack, so that's good. Uh, losing this attack without the help of the French, though, which is a shame. Come on, guys. We could get these, these dudes destroyed here. Uh, but we are going to take the capital, and I, I believe that should generate a uh, capitulation. Uh, on their part. What is that to see? Uh, and there we go, the Paris Colonial Exposition. Uh, it was quite the experience. Alright, so a few short hours ago, France has declared the uh, Paris Colonial Exposition to be open after months of extensive planning. France, after facing excessive flack for their colonial holdings from other nations such as Germany and the USSR, has decided to hold a festival dedicated to displaying the vast resources of her colonies amongst a multitude of other subjects. A multitude of other nations has participated in this event, particularly other nations possessing colonies. Nevertheless, the event is planned to continue for another few months until it is closed at France's discretion, despite condemnations from Germany or from the German and Soviet governments. All right, we're, we're building our, our political power up again. That's nice. Okay, uh, s s still losing here, but you know the point is is that we're we're keeping them locked down, uh, and this is you know, damn, they're coming up behind us. We are currently cut off. Oh, what do you know? That's a shame. I think we're still going to win here. So I'm going to keep the attack going. Try and get that port. But yeah, it seems like we are not getting enough assistance from the Spaniards and French right now, which is a fucking shame. Uh, yeah, we are, we're having some difficulty in this attack. I don't think we're going to succeed, honestly. We're going to have to pull back if we don't get some help. You know what I'm going to do? This just sucks because yeah, these guys are going to be able to get all that territory back. All right, so we're going to come back over here. Having one division over there by itself just wasn't enough. Uh, I'm keeping that attack up because I'm hoping that we'll be able to rescue them here in a second. Uh, we'll go grab up this province, and we're still winning, so that's what's important. 
so we'll keep on that attack going. They've just been kind of sitting here when they should be attacking here. Uh, they could be doing a lot of things right now, which they're not. Uh, hopefully these guys don't win, don't succeed there. Alright, so we're going to go grab this province up, though it looks like we'll actually have to defend ourselves here. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, looks like the French might be coming over here now to help with that defense. And, uh, yeah, we're <laughs> still attacking there. Uh, I almost want to pull it back because, yeah, the organization is getting pretty low. Okay, now we can attack over here. Excellent. Let's go and do this attack, and uh, hopefully this should allow us to then defeat them there once they, they're no longer taking that massive attrition. Uh, so we'll go and uh, attack here, try and get that unit destroyed. Uh, and it does seem like... The combat values might have changed a little bit. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, it does seem like this is... Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work now. Yeah, we took too much of a hit uh, when we uh, were losing, taking all that attrition. Although it seems like we're getting help now, so I think it should should work out. We just need to take that one province, and then they're done for, and then we don't have to fight any of these guys. Uh, I should probably prioritize that, in fact. Uh, and, well, what happened over here? Italo, uh, Italo Balbo returns from Libya. So General Balbo has landed in Rome today after his last victory in the Cineric, Cineric region. Uh, probably mispronouncing that. Uh, thanks to his war merit, now we can finally exercise control of the whole of Libyan region. The usual greeting for occasion like this is the bless of the king in a meeting, but General Balbo is considered dangerous by many, uh, risen through the violent ways of squadrism. Uh, Balbo was one of the men of De Anzio, freed by the Amnesty of 25. He says to have changed since then, but the recent autocratic attitude shown in Libya is a point against his previous statement. What shall we do? I say we, we give him a hero's welcome, uh, though that is going to result in more Valkist. How bad could it be? What is the Valkist uh, support right now in our country? Oh, there it is. It's 4%. Oh, he's the party leader. Hmm. All right. Well, that's... Never mind then. I didn't realize he was the party leader. I was hoping that he he had uh, been honest about that. All right, he's too ambitious, so we're not gonna not gonna support his return. Uh, and I, I don't know why I'm not prioritizing uh, it, getting that done because if there's really no point for us to be attacking here. Uh, so let's do this. Let's prioritize attacking that province because once we defeat them there, then then those guys are destroyed. So uh, the national focus has been bypassed here. Let me just take a look what happened there. Uh, where's that? Oh, okay. That's right here. Um, so, would we now be able to make a decision here? I, I don't know why we can't do anything. Yeah, they don't let you do anything national focus-wise as Italy. I don't know if that's uh, true of uh, all the, the countries, or if this just an Italian thing. Or if it's, you know, the fact that we don't have any political power. Uh, it seems like all of them, yeah, all of them require something that we don't have. And these are always false. Huh. Oh, okay, because they probably happened by event. Got it. So we're just kind of waiting on uh, events to fire, apparently. Just weird not to not be able to, uh, you know, select a, a national focus in the beginning. Uh, so we're going to get these guys over here. Get them destroyed. Uh, and after that, oh, Indian rebels have surrendered. So the Indian rebels did end up losing. All right. I'm actually surprised with that. I was kind of expecting them to uh, to win. I thought that would be kind of... I, I figured it was going to be kind of balanced to make them, them win. So that the rebellion isn't, you know, inconsequential. Because essentially that's exactly what it is. If, if uh, you know, it's easy for you to defeat them, then it's really just something for you to do. It's kind of like the conquest of Ethiopia. It's, it's a for sure win. Let's go and get the research time. And we should have this done here soon. And pretty much all the units have already been destroyed by this point. Or in the process of being destroyed. But that should force a capitulation. Let's go and move our army. And then, yeah, it looks like we are now winning. I think it's not just us. I think uh, Spain helping out here has been uh, quite instrumental as well. We should probably go ahead and get ourselves a front going. I think we're going to go after Valencia. That seems like it'll be the easiest one, though there are a lot of troops over here. Uh, let me just see if we can't see troop numbers. Let's see uh, who's stronger. 14 to 27, 15 to 21. All right, so let's just say that the uh, monarchists are stronger. So let's go ahead and go after Valencia. 
Uh, we could also destroy those units up there, but it looks like the Spanish have that uh, taken care of. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a front just so we can get a planning bonus. I think we're going to need it in this particular case. Uh, and the location where we're going to want to attack from, well, there are troops just about everywhere. Uh, I think we should go, I almost want to go on like down here. Let me see here. Nah, we'll go right here. This, will, this is the closest to Valencia. Uh, so let's just put a front right there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. My bad. Right there, and take Valencia. There we go. All right, excellent. Yeah, it's been a, ah, I got it messed up. Uh, it's been a, a while since I have played Hearts of Iron. I am definitely feeling it. Uh, we've been playing EU4. Uh, that series has been a blast. Uh, it's it's gonna be ending here soon, largely because of the fact that it's, uh, there's gonna be a patch coming out. This is just gonna keep on fucking adjusting. Uh, yeah, they're trying to reconnect with their troops over here. Well, that's a shame. Uh, let's just get our troops over here, and then we'll kind of move them around ourselves. Uh, they did destroy those. Excellent. All right, good job, Spain. Proud of you. Uh, so we're going to actually reduce this. Like so they can go that way if they want. I want to take Valencia. All right, so we should be able to just kind of grab this province here as soon as we get here. Going to grab it up for me, man. Uh, and let's go ahead and bring another division over this way. And just hope we don't get cut off. Uh, we'll try and cut those guys off, though. Uh, looks like it shouldn't be too difficult to do. Uh, and those guys are now cut off, so let's... Hmm. Let's grab this province first. And let's go ahead and just start going towards Valencia as quick as possible, because that should force a capitulation of these guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut these guys off so they can't come and try and rescue Valencia. Damn, that does result in us having to fight them. All right, whatever. Uh, we are having to defend there as well. Uh, but they should be locked down to that province. And once they start taking the supply problems, though, there's this unit over here we have to worry about as well. Okay. Um, so we'll just defend here against these guys until the Spanish can help us out. Hopefully they'll come deal with these guys. I don't know what they're doing. Looks like they're going to grab that province, so that's good. Uh, and we just will continue to attack Valencia. Uh, so we're getting experience from this, this whole thing. This is nice. We're already setting up four army experience. We're going to definitely need to make a lot of adjustments to our army. Army's kind of garbage right now. Uh, but as I was saying, we are currently playing EO4 series with England, or now Great Britain. And yeah, I've had a lot of fun playing that. Just playing something different, because I haven't played EO4 uh, on the channel in a very, very long time. And we are losing this battle now. That's a shame. All right, they're pushing us back. Oh, Lord. All right, well, it looks like they'll get them destroyed. And then we'll be able to pull back here. Uh, but the situation here is not... Not good overall. We're gonna keep the attack up even if we're losing for right now. Uh, though I am tempted to attack elsewhere because there's clearly too many divisions here. Uh, I don't know where else we'd attack where you'd have a good success rate. Uh, really, there's nowhere. All right, let's go ahead and bring these guys over here. Let's go ahead and tick this back. And uh, we could go around this way and cut all of these divisions off too. That's an option, but I'm gonna try. I mean, I don't think there's gonna be any win in here. Let's just try it out and see what happens if we have two divisions, if we can win. The Kingdom of Portugal has declared war on the Portuguese Republic. So there's a uh, civil war in Portugal now. Uh, are they in no, the United States of Brazil? Okay. Uh, where is... There's the Kingdom of Portugal. Where's the Portuguese Republic? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they're at. Yeah, I thought they would be... I have no idea where they're at. Oh, here we go. They're in Africa. Okay. So, the home state is at war with the colonies. All right, we're not going to win here, even with help, I don't think. Nah, we're not. Let's go and pull back. And we're going to grab that province up. See if we can't cut these divisions off up here. Uh, but yeah, the, the EU4 series did have to end because uh, there's a patch coming out that's not going to be save game compatible. Uh, we're just going to... I guess we'll just wait for them to leave there. Uh, and so we, we can't can't continue it uh, and not only that and I just need to delete this front right here uh, But not only that it hasn't been getting a lot of views uh, Unfortunately, it seems a lot of fans of these hearts of iron 4 series has not uh, it has not translated to e4 uh, I guess people don't uh, You know, I know they're two very different games uh, so just because you like some Paradox games doesn't mean you like all of them. We're going to let those guys leave because it's actually more of a hassle having them there. Uh, Libyans occupy government buildings in Tripoli. 
1917 Treaty of Akroma was supposed to give Libya autonomy under Italian rule, but after the Great War, most of the treaty's provisions were undone and Libya continued to be ruled like Italy's other colonies. This was not popular with Libyans to say the least. With the controversial capture and imprisonment of Omar Mukhtar, a group of Libyan intellectuals have decided to occupy an Italian administrative building in Tripoli. They have given a list of grievances to the local press, which uh, mostly pertain to the treatment of Mukhtar, but also include objections to the increasing Italian population in Libyan cities and the obvious economic and legal benefits these immigrants have over the local population. Police are ready to remove protesters as soon as we give the word, but many anti-imperial Italians might use this event against our party. Okay, so criminals must be punished, cost political power, and the market liberals will become less popular, which they're just barely holding majority right now. Or we say it is best for both sides if we can reach an agreement. Modify colonial administration. Uh, oh, okay. And I think that's this one right here. And that would give us more recruitable population. And... Oh, that would actually generate. Or, no, okay, it would modify it, never mind. Uh, so it would uh, re end up being negative 15% recruitable population factor, and we would no longer have the consumer goods factory uh, negative penalty there. So let's let's do this. Um, yeah, let's try and see if we can't reach an agreement with the, the Libyans, even if they've been fighting us this whole time. Uh, we'll try and try and work together. Oh, that actually requires more consumer goods factories. Oh, wow. I'm an idiot. I didn't even notice that. I thought it was a negative. Uh, so that was actually worse for our factories. Um, all right, well, whatever. That's fine, I guess. Uh, not really. I'm kind of irritated about it. I didn't see that. The oil trade with the United States of America was modified because of the lack of civilian factories. Oh, Lord. Yeah, we probably don't have no civilian factories any longer. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to continue trading. Uh, for everything that we need. It's it's fine. We'll just have to, to deal with it. Um, I think we don't need the rubber as much. So let's go ahead and tick that down. Just so we'll have some civilian factories so that we can actually do some building. Uh, we're in a very weak position. We'll have one civilian factory building. Wow. <laughs> That's not even fucking worth it. Uh, let me just take a look. You know what? Let's just... Uh, we don't need to... We don't need to trade for all that oil then. Oops. We'll just take it down to just one. God damn it. So that we can actually build something. I mean, it's not going to help out by much. We're talking about the 30th of May of next year. That's quite a ways away. <sighs> yeah, that's a damn shame, guys. All right, well, it is what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and move these guys up over here. Uh, they are going to attempt to... I almost want to let them take that in a way because then we just be able to grab Valencia up uh, and reconnect these guys here. Um... You know what? Valencia results in a capitulation, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab this province up, and then we'll come back. Let them have that. One hour, there we go. And attack. All right, so this will result in their capitulation, hopefully, anyway. I guess we'll see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attack up here, make sure they can't grab that province from us, and there we go. They gave up their, their capital. That was super stupid. Uh, so we have one, and now, so far, we have taken the capitals of two of these... Uh, countries, so we've been really helping out, even with our two little old divisions. Let's go ahead and send our army over here. I'm not going to worry about all these these guys here. Let's just grab the third capital up and uh, finish this war. And uh, our our side in Spain shall shall win. I'll be super salty if we end up flipping and then we're not we're not democratic anymore, uh, and we end up going uh, a direction I didn't want to go. Oh, there we go. It's over. Excellent. So we finished up the conflict. Uh, the Republic in Spain has uh, emerged victorious. Excellent. All right, so we'll get our troops back in uh, the 1st of June. And let's just go ahead and go back up to speed 5. There's nothing for us to do any longer. Uh, I don't think there is. I'm going to take a look if there's any uh, world conflicts out there. It's just the Portuguese Civil War, uh, which I think the kingdom will likely win. Uh, so we could help out. But, I mean, what would we do? Uh, just taking a look here. I forgot I can use WSD keys to move around. Um... Yeah, Portuguese Republic is, you know, I, I don't see any purpose of us attempting to help out there. We've got our basic machine tools. Let's go ahead and go for, uh, let's do concentrated uh, industry. And I haven't been taking a look if they've modified any of these uh, from, oops, uh, from vanilla. Probably should be, because they could be different. It might not be as good. Well, we got our volunteer forces back. See if there's anything different here. No, no, it seems to be the same. 
Yeah, it looks the same. Okay, so we'll go with that direction. And uh, these guys hey, have been training forever. These are the most well-trained troops in our, our land here. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and stop them from training. We'll just leave them in the training army for right now. That's fine. And yeah, I've had them training for uh, about six months now. <laughs> so they've been... Uh, they are far too trained. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, we're just basically waiting for something to happen right now uh, because I'm not really in much control of the situation. Uh, without National Focus Tree, without being able to use the National Focus Tree, there's really not a whole lot that we can do uh, besides just getting techs. Uh, we can't build anything. We don't have any damn manpower. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to be irritated at myself because I didn't notice that that was... Uh, not as beneficial that that event that I did, but not as beneficial as I was expecting. So we get field hospitals, and we got the construction as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get excavation. That's going to be useful. And we're going to continue with industrial techs for right now. Uh, oh, actually, never mind. It looks like we have all of them being researched already. Never mind then. Uh, could go with radio, but we won't. Uh, we're going to go. Let me just see here. I. Almost want to keep going for support companies because you know we're going to need them. But just in case we end up at war, let's get support weapons first. And uh, we can't do anything with the support companies anyway. We don't have any damn experience. We got five experience. There's really nothing we can do with that just yet. And we're not even training, so that's not even going up. Did we train this guy? Ah, uh, we did. Uh, our ideology has grown. All right, due to his popular policies, one of our loyal ministers has managed to strengthen our ideology. With some additional influence, we could use this to increase our popularity. Uh, so I think we should because as I said, we're just barely hanging on. I know it costs a little power, but you know what guys? It feels like it's too important not to. Uh, we are now at 34% from 31%. And we're definitely at risk of, of perhaps losing uh, the 1936 election. I don't know how the elections work in the mod. Um, I imagine that it probably has something to do with the current ideological setup though. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it would be wise to go into the election with such a such a minor majority. I mean, it's not much. Um, I, I wonder if we have like a coalition or going going with somebody or anything like that. I know that the you know mod doesn't represent that, but you know, with having only thirty one and now thirty four percent of the seats, yeah, you'd think you'd have to have a coalition to get anything done. Uh, the London stock market has crashed. Okay. Oh God, God help us all. Has the Great Depression happen yet in this lore? I don't actually know. It made it sound like uh, we were about to have, uh, you know, some type of a recession. I don't know. I guess we'll find out if we get get an event or anything that happens. Oh, yep, there we go. Uh, the London stock market crash hits Italy. So after the London market stock exchange stopped plum plugging, the world remained shocked by the devastation that it led to. Our nation survived for a while, but the consequences of the LSMC are reaching our beloved nation. Earlier this month, the Milan Stock Exchange it crashed, and now thousands of people are already suffering from it. We better react quicker this time if we don't want another red BNM. <laughs> All right, so that is really bad. Oh, yeah, that is really bad. We're not going to have any civilian factories, guys. Oh, yeah, this is a really rough start, man. Yeah, that's... We're not going to be able to trade with them at all. Uh, we're not going to be trade for any of the resources we need. Uh, yeah, we can't build anything either. We don't have any factories. All right, so that's a shame. <laughs> so, Entente Council Session of 1936. After the Great War, France and the other Entente powers established themselves as the overseers and protectors of Europe. Uh, to accompany this goal, France established the Entente Council as an organization to mediate any conflicts that arise on the, on the continent. Every year, delegates from all across Europe gather in Paris for two weeks of discussion and debate. This year is shaping up to be the most important council yet. The economic depression caused by the London stock market collapse is forcing nations to scramble for solutions, and the threat of German rearmament looms over us more and more. The continued stability of Europe may rest on the outcome of this council. Of course we're going to attend. It's too important not to. Uh, the Germany issue. Alright, so this seems like an important event. When Dressier took power in Germany, he promised his supporters that he would restore the Reich's former glory. It is now clear that he is willing to do this at any cost. When the London stock market crash swept through France and Europe, Dressier took the opportunity to announce that Germany would no longer abide to the Treaty of Versailles. As our delegates speak, the German war machine that led to the deaths of over 20 million people during the Great War roars back to life. It has been agreed early on that France and the greater European community are in no shape to disarm Germany by force, but it would take action now 
Um, but if we take action now, we may be able to cripple Dressier's goal of rearmament. Germany is incredibly dependent on its neighbors for its industrial sector. If we can agree on proper weapon sanction, we could bring Germany's arm industry to a halt. But many delegates worry that hurting their own arms industry in the middle of a recession isn't worth the small diplomatic foothold over Germany. Okay, so we can say German aggression must be punished, or we can't hurt our own economy over this. Our economy is devastated right now, um, but Germany's a threat to us all. So German aggression must be punished. I don't know if I'm going to regret these. These are probably terrible decisions I'm making here. Uh, Antonio Gramis, uh, Gramsci filibusters to Parliament. In the wake of the LSMC, Italian Communist Party leader Antonio Gramsci has made several long-winded speeches in Parliament denouncing the economic policies of the Partito Liberal Italian, Italiano. In his most recent speech, he has made several extreme demands of the moderate government, but with the current Parliament, it's very unlikely that any of them will be implemented. Despite this, though, Gramsci's uh, passionate speeches have convinced some of the communist cause. Okay. So they're going to get, the collectivists are going to get a plus 2% and we lose more political power. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a rough start. So they're going to be at 15% now. Uh, did that take from our own? Because that's going to be irritating. Uh, it took 1% from us. All right, well, this is a shame. All right, I don't know who the other percent came from. Okay. Um, so... A bunch of events popping up, and this is probably going to be the end here. We just got to a new month. We're on October 1st. Um, so, yeah, this is probably going to be the end after we go through these. Uh, the Entente Council approved sanctions against Germany. So they have uh, approved it after hours of debate. The Entente Council has voted to sanction Germany. Most delegates were swayed by the hope that sanctioning the German arms industry would destroy their plans for rearmament. Only time will tell if this proves true. All right, so uh, this is result in even less consumer factories for us, and our production and efficiency cap is down. So we hurt our own economy, uh, but we knew that was going to happen. I felt like it was worth it to shut down the Germans. Uh, so France suggests we recognize the Soviet Union as the legitimate Russian government. Well, that's an interesting proposal, France. Uh, the Great War is a conflict so devastating it brought down the most powerful and vast continuous empire to ever exist, Russia. After three brutal years of war, the Russian state fell into a civil war where the liberal white forces fought the collectivist red forces. Eventually, the Reds were victorious and many white leaders were forced to flee Russia. Many of these men ended up in Paris. In an act of solidarity with their former Russian ally, the French and the Entente agreed not to recognize the USSR as a legitimate Russian state. Uh, while this once served the interests of the Entente, the rising threat of Germany may force us to reconsider this policy. Being on good terms with the Soviets may help deter German aggression. Well, I kind of agree uh, that Germany is the bigger threat because they're closer. Uh, and we could do it with Russia later. We could do it with the USSR later. Yeah, I, I say let's let's recognize them. It's childish to ignore the USSR. They're clearly they're the government now. Uh, that's the way it is. So let's let's do this, and we'll see how that passes in the next episode because this is going to be the end of this one. I know that there's many of you guys are, who are only here for my Hearts of Iron 4 content, uh, so you might have missed some of the the recent uh, games we've been playing. Uh, some of them really, really good, uh, you know, if you weren't here on the channel because I wasn't playing Hearts of Iron 4 for, for a while. It was a good six weeks or so, at least. I don't know, probably a little bit longer than that uh, since we had a Hearts of Iron series. And so, uh, yeah, I wanted to just bring up a couple of them. The main one being Panzer Strategy. Uh, so Panzer Strategy, I'm going to have an absolute blast with that game. Uh, it's a really, really excellent turn-based World War II strategy game. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've done several videos of it, just going through the through the, the campaign, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. So if you enjoy World War II strategy, even if it's not a Paradox real-time one, it's it's a, uh, a turn-based game, I, I think you guys should check that series out. You might find a game that you really like. Uh, and then also, we played another game called Victory at Sea Pacific, uh, and I only did one video of it. It was more of like a, just kind of show the game off. Uh, you should consider checking that out. That's a real-time strategy uh, game focused on the naval aspect of the war, specifically in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and you play as the United States. Uh, I think you can also play as Japan, but I don't know if that's unlocked yet. Uh, I think it might be something that's coming in a later patch. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but when I was playing it, it only let me play as the United States, and I thought that was locked due to, uh, you know, needing to complete the United States first, but that wasn't the case. But still, it's a really fun game. I'm playing a little bit on my own, and yeah, I'm liking it. Uh, so it's another video you might want to check out, see if you might find a game that you uh, really like. Uh, and then, of course, there's the e Europa Universalis 4 series uh, that I had mentioned earlier. 
Uh, that's also one that's been really enjoyable. Uh, if you like Paradox strategy games, then you should consider checking it out. It's just been a really fun campaign uh, overall. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's definitely made me want to play a little bit more EU4 on the channel. Uh, as I said, though, we did have to end it because of the new patch. And then also, it, it just wasn't getting the views because, as I said, a lot of you guys don't uh, seem to be interested. The people who are interested in the Hearts of Iron 4 content don't seem to be interested in EU4. Uh, but whether you are or not, it's, it's just been a fun campaign, even if you don't play the game um, for uh, understandable reasons, because I also have my gripes with EU4 that I actually talk about a little bit in that series. Uh, so, so yeah, just, you know, might have a little bit of fun checking that out. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I uh, just wanted to kind of throw those out there if you're looking for something to watch. I do put videos out every day usually and for these Hearts of Iron 4 series or try to anyways with the exception of Mondays. Mondays I don't usually put a video out because uh, I work all day on Sunday. Uh, of course there will be one this Monday of this series because obviously it's a new series so we can't, you know, we're not going to put just one video out on Sunday and then not come back till Tuesday again. So there will be an episode 2 on Monday but then after that there probably won't be Monday videos uh, unless I, I get Sunday off which has been happening here and there lately which is quite unfortunate because I really need the work right now and Sunday is one of my long shifts so I bring it up in case you're uh, uh, it's a Monday there's no Hearts of Iron video or you know you watch the video and you still need something to watch while you eat your cereal uh, go check out one of those other series you might find something that you enjoy all right, so we're going to go ahead and end this one here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our content, and leave a comment, guys. I love talking to you guys. I read and reply to all comments and all those things, those comments, those likes, all that engagement, help out in the search engine, help people find the channel. So we really appreciate it. All right, guys, hope to see you on the next episode, and thanks for watching.